Welcome to MJ Sailing. We're Matt and Jessica, a couple that left Michigan for the nomadic lifestyle seven years ago. Recently, we refitted an aluminum boat to sail to the Arctic and explore some of the more remote areas of the planet. Thanks for joining the adventure. Got out of the anchor in Bangor, which is an absolutely lovely city. Um, wouldn't be too bad of a place to uh, spend winter, but we are really, really looking forward to Plymouth uh, Sun Harbor Marina. There um, is going to be our winter destination. So yeah, it's going to be another overnight, but that's fine. Uh, it'll allow us then to leave and arrive at daylight, which is by far the most important thing for us. Um, everything else offshore is charted, and we feel comfortable with that. Making the overnight trip from the Bangor area down to Dublin, we departed the marina in the early afternoon at slack tide, since strong currents pushing through can make disembarking a dock a little tricky at times. Our plan for the moment was to tuck into the cove of a small island just outside the harbor entrance and wait until 8 p.m. to begin our 90-mile passage south. Using a tidal timing optimization, we'd be able to make this passage in 12 hours by using the converging and diverging tides at St. John's Point, just south of Strangford Lau. When timed accurately, a vessel can optimize a dozen hours of continuous favorable tides. For more technical information on how this works, we've left a link in our description box below. And so the multi-layering begins. So many layers. T-shirt, wool, fleece, puffy jacket, foul weather jacket, and that's just the tops. Yep. And for me, I'm still in the process. I've got like fleece, long underwear top, long underwear bottoms, one out of two layers of socks so far. And this is just for a 12 hour overnight. <laughs> I don't want to be cold. But this is what we get for sailing Ireland in November, so what are you going to do? Well, crawl into a warm bed in the morning, that's for dang sure. Yeah. Getting underway has been successful. We just motored out of the harbor and we can already feel that tide starting to change and give us a nice little push. Um, we have the specific route that Matt found that lets you like really ride the tide and make the trip, like the 90 mile trip in about 12 hours, but you have to stay very close to shore right now, we're maybe like a mile off. So it's a little weird like going out in the dark and having all of these like city and street lights so close to the boat, but again, we trust our Navionics charts, they are great. And because we're getting a late start, hi, I'm off to bed. Got my nice little bed made here waiting for me. And I'm sure as soon as Georgie sees that I'm in it, she's gonna come join me. So I'm gonna try and get a nice three hours of sleep before I go on shift and hopefully everything is still running smoothly then. The next morning I was woken up just as the sun was rising and told to put on my gear right away and get outside. When I went to meet Matt, I found we had wrapped a fishing pot around our prop and rudder. Surprisingly, this happened while the boat was under sail, but the stuck pot had still managed to loop itself around enough times to disable our steering, and now we were adrift just outside of Dublin. Now that I was on watch, Matt had to dunk in the seven degree water to set us free. Soaking wet, Matt saves the day. 
uh, we hit a crab pot or a lobster pot or fishing pot or whatever um, buoy and uh, it wrapped around the prop and a, around the rudder and I, I whatever I felt bad cutting it free but whatever um, well we were so, drifting yeah seat. we were drifting we were attached to it and uh, cut it free and it was still attached um, had two buoys on it cut both of those loose and then was able to just manually untie it right from the platform and weave it out pull it out uh, I mean I got extremely extremely lucky that I didn't have to actually physically get all the way in the water the platform was getting smashed with waves and stuff and uh, I am soaked I was underwater for a bit of it um, but I didn't actually have to get under the boat which is good Huh. And that deserves a hot shower if we it's have hot water. Exciting morning, but now all my gear's all wet. Uh, salty wet. Salty wet, which is disgusting. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you for getting in the water and freeing us. Yeah. I'll buy you a beer later. <laughs> or some chocolate. We pass these crop pots all the time, but we didn't even have that engine on, so it's really weird that it kind of like sucked it up. So luckily, Matt was able to get that undone. We've got about eight miles left until we get to our marina, which is a little bit outside of uh, where are we going again? Dublin. It's about 12 kilometers outside of Dublin, so yeah, hopefully, we can just get tied up in there. Looking like it's going to be a nice day. There's some really, really bad weather, like on the southern coast of Ireland right now, of hurricane force winds. So it's kind of nice that we're sitting in the eye of it right now. Um, yeah, and actually we were doing some sailing this morning until the whole debacle happened. And I think, you know, the rest of it, we're just going to get ourselves there. just called into the marina office and they do have a spot for us. We got a little bit worried. Something else kind of cool but worrisome if you're trying to come into a harbor that's not yours and get a slip. There's like this huge regatta going on. Came in, fog lifted, there's like 50 sails out on the water. So we got a little worried that we weren't going to be able to find a space but we just called in a super friendly guy behind the desk and uh, gave us a slip assignment. So we already know where we have to go once we get in. So as long as we can get in without getting in the way of these racers, maybe get a couple of cool shots as we pass in, I think both of us will be ready for a hot shower. Especially Matt, poor guy. Had to dive in the water to get that buoy out. I'll have to do something special for him today. Thank you. 
The way that Guinness came about is because back in London in about 1720, a new dark malt beer started to become a popular style. And because the porters of Comfits were the ones that would drink it, I'll have to go back to the information. I don't think that was like Wall Street, but something close to that. Uh, became such a popular style that they actually named the beer Porter. And then a few decades later is how Guinness got its start. an amazing tour so we'll tell you more about it once this is gone. Yeah. Well it's about 11 o'clock right now. Uh, the rate at which Jess drinks Guinness we will be here until about 5 36 o'clock so we will watch the sunset. Yeah. So, uh, she usually takes forever to do this kind of stuff. That's okay. The view is beautiful. <laughs> well it's kind of cool we ended up getting the VIP treatment because when we were at the 360 degree bar upstairs, uh, we were talking to the guys and they told us to come down to the fourth floor to stout and uh, gave us a voucher and you get to have a beer here, so we're getting another one which is cool, but they put your picture on the phone. So we're going to go inside right now, they're going to take a photo of us and then that picture is going to be printed on the stout. So that's pretty awesome. Let's go do it. Yeah. And then when I press your picture, the machine is going to spray malted barley extracts on top of the point to create your picture. So it's just like an ordinary, but it uses the barley extract. 
No change to pace or anything because it's made. That is amazing. <gasps> Exactly. So which one are you going to take? I'm going to take the kissing one. Romantic at heart. It's not every day you get to drink a glass. Of yourself? With a picture of yourself on it. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, kind of like I did that on purpose. Seemed to be just drinking yeah. Jessica. One sip in and yep. it has lost me already. Yep, now it's just, you know, it's a much more attractive view now. It's just me. Uh, it's like looking into a mirror. Yep. I have kept mine perfect. Mm. How long did you drink? Well, look at that couple. You can tell I had like a little sip uh, right yep. back there. Otherwise, we're perfectly intact. <laughs> This is such a cool idea. Now <laughs> you just can keep drinking it. So what to say for the Guinness tour, which is we've read the most popular tour in Ireland and Pretty crazy. one of the most popular tours in Europe. Um, but not sure what to expect when we came in. It's actually laid out awesome. really well. It is awesome. They had a fantastic visual design. Um, feels like you're in a modern art museum the way that they laid everything out. It's beautiful here. But also, really, the smells. They pump in uh, smells of the malt, the, 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 the barley, the like chocolate. That. And it oh, it smells so huge, chocolatey. Huge, huge. All the way through. Yeah, so, awesome. personally, I'm extremely happy that we came here. Yeah, this was actually a very cool spot. So I and not just because we got there. two pints each. <laughs> got a little freebie. Yep. Yeah. But it's lunchtime now. Uh, we've had a lot to drink. We have. <laughs> Let's finish. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Going for a ride in the Mustang back. Going for a ride in the Mustang back. It's going to be okay. This will keep you warm. And dry. It will keep you nice and warm and dry. It is time for Georgie's, for a Georgie dental appointment, just a cleaning. And being a visitor, they have to get us in like their first slot in the morning, so we're even the cold to get the cat in. Hi, you. <gasps> Precious cargo. Precious cargo. I don't know if she knows what's happening. So we get her in to get her teeth cleaning. It's been a while since Jessica and I have had a first time. She's the priority, as always. As always, can't let anything happen to the Georgie girl. Oh, this marina is so freaking big. A thousand boats, and most of the slips are full. the bag. Hi, how was your ride? Yeah, you nice and comfy. <laughs> She's like, please tell me what's happening here. This is your happy place. Okay. We have now left Georgie in the hands of the vet and have come back to the boat. They let us know that uh, because they're gonna have to use anesthesia to like knock her out to clean her teeth that it's gonna be a couple of hours. So we've just got back to the marina and oh going to heat up a much needed cup of coffee, have a custard donut, and I think because it's actually a sunny day, no rain, we're going to go do a little sightseeing this afternoon because in a day or two we're going to be out again. Fingers crossed. Our first stop right now, we're strolling down the waterfront and we're going to an area called the 40 foot hole. And uh, it's supposed to be one of those like natural bathing pools, which I don't think anyone's gonna be in today, but as we go to our next destination, it's still worth a stop. We 
we're coming up on the 40 foot hole right now, which is uh, like this little point here. I think it's also called Sandy Cove. And when I just had my camera out doing a pan in, I think there's like a big group of people in the water. And this is pretty cold out. I think like with the wind chill, we're just a few degrees above freezing, no joke. So I want to get over there and see what those crazy people are doing. Not a lot of beach at high tide. <laughs> it does drop uh, about three meters, so uh, roughly nine feet uh, at low tide, which would give you a lot of room to lay out, I guess, in between the rocks. <laughs> Momentarily. gentleman's bathing place. To the gentleman's bathing place. Uh, so apparently it was nude bathing for a while and they've opened it up to I think everybody. So keep your speedos on gentlemen. Read up on this place just a little bit before we left and as Matt said it was for quite a long time a gentleman's only some place they could come, strip off their clothes, go for a swim and be undisturbed because it actually is kind of like tucked away out here. And it wasn't actually until 30 years ago that they opened it up to the general public so now men, women, and children can come here and enjoy this as well. And the waves they are crashing today. Some really good views. of a rush having those big waves crash right in front of you. Wasn't expecting one or two of those to be that high. I like the guy now that's getting himself a front row seat. <laughs> yeah. well, I I think he's planning on getting wet anyway. <laughs> <sighs> Seriously, one of those waves that startled me so bad. My hand, I'm trying to hold the camera and it's actually shaking. I thought I was going to get swept off there. Woo! Gets the blood pumping. Well, we just spoke to Steve, the fledgling, uh, one-week-old sauna business. Perfect for this area. Um, he said that even this time of year, they can get 100-plus people swimming in this area. It's just right now, the wind is actually coming out of the north for once, and it's pushing the swells into this area, and it's not really safe to swim here. Um, so, majority of people have gone over to the other side that we first went to, uh, it's kind of nice you can bounce around as needed, uh, depending on the weather. But this is definitely the popular spot, and that's why you put a sauna in business here. After leaving the 40 foot hole, we have walked ourselves about a kilometer or kilometer and a half to the town of Dalkey, which has a couple of castles because it used to be the port for Dublin since they didn't want the ships going into the shallow bay. They used to dock in the deeper waters and they used the castles for storage. But uh, what I actually find a little more interesting, for my taste anyway, is just another kilometer or so past the town is a hike to the Dalkey Hill which is supposed to give great views over the bay. Could not ask for a better fall day color change, so we're gonna hike up and take in some spectacular views of the bay below.
all done touring for the day. Just popped back to the boat for a quick lunch and we got the call that Georgie is ready to be picked up. So we're gonna go get our sweet little Georgie girl and uh, maybe get like a few good laughs at how probably like knocked out she is. It's just in a state of, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know if, I think she'll have slept it off at that point. But, yeah, uh, they did keep her we'll a little see. bit longer because they wanted her to be awake when we picked her up. They told us that, so we'll see. But either way, we're looking forward to having her back, even though she was only gone for a few hours. Feels like too long. Mm. Okay, Georgie, girl, we're going to take you home now. It's okay. Yeah, just stay Just in stay there. in there. We'll give you a little area where you can seek your head off. <laughs> Poor kitty had to have a tooth removed. She did. Yeah. But you get soft food for a few days now. Yeah. So. And no pain in the mouth, hopefully. Hopefully that's gone. Yeah. Isn't that? <laughs> it's like she's drunk right now. I think so. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. like, she just keeps like rolling over the bag and staring out. She's on a nice little high. Yep. Yeah. Well, at least she still seems alert and curious, but very unsure why there's a green band around her arm. <laughs> She's not too happy with that. No, no. Don't even think about it. No. Now's not the time to be curious. Okay, Kayla, let's go back in. Go on. Move along. Go on, good girl. We'll get that band-aid off her arm. So you're not mad at us. Mm. You're not mad we took you to get your teeth clean. That's good. Cause that's quite a purr you have on you right now. Got a little bit of wet food in you. You're a happy kitty. Yeah. Japan. 